William Hill sponsors IFL TV. I'm the man to beat Daniel Dubois. We're going to sleep. This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Ben. Oh, oh my, how unprofessional is that? Who's it? Who is it? Tom Little. Is it? Hey, Chevy. <laughs> Oi, you're on IFL TV now, Mush. Ah, oh, hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, I'm going to get out on our first public appearance. Who? Where's Where's Wifey? Get her, yeah. get her in the shop, Chavy. Tom, you look like you're holding her down there, mate. Let go of her. All right, then. All right, Chavy. She don't want to show an appearance. <laughs> all right, listen. All right, listen. Let us just finish this interview and we'll call you and we'll have boys talk, all right? Uh, oi, oi. Tell Ben, right? The, code, the, the secret training plan we were working on when me and him were working together. I know that I'll be the one for what's that? Plenty of head button gloves, breaking the hands. That, is, that, is, that, is that what tactics you reckon we should go with? Break his, uh, break his hands on Tyson's face? I'm surprised he knows what a metacarpal is. Oi, father told me what a metacarpal is. <laughs> your ass. All right, listen, let's finish this interview and we're going to call you back. Tweet your ladder on my baby. Father. Oh, he's funny, Tom, isn't he? He, does, he, can, he makes me die. How are you? Good, you? Lovely shot of uh, old uh, Marilyn in the background there. Good old talk, wouldn't she? Mm. Mm. You're a good old sort as well, aren't you? <sighs> Some would say, but... I How's... some glasses, to be honest. I did want to buy them glasses. I'm not messing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they are good glasses. Yeah. How's camp? Good, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Um, overall, obviously, as uh, you're always looking at what you can improve on. So there's certain areas that, you know, make notes of and like to uh, focus on next time to try and improve but in an overall people always say it's the best camp I wouldn't say it's the best camp we've had in terms of it being straightforward because obviously it was half in the UK half over here and um, with the Billy Joe fight in between um, media stuff etc but in terms of performance I'd say it's probably the best I've seen Tyson so far obviously last time out the fight was one of the most, well, probably the most talked about fight of, of 2018 mm. last year. Um, he comes in against the undefeated, relatively unknown to some degree, Tom, Tom Schwartz. Schwartz. So, how do you kind of, how's his motivation levels? Who? Tyson's going from, from a Wilder to a Schwartz, no disrespect, obviously. Yeah, listen, you have to be realistic. It's not, doesn't have the spice that a Deontay Wilder fight has, but also he's been boxing for a long time and he knows that you have to prepare diligently um, do the right things everything's been done um, and you know obviously the Anthony Joshua situation last week probably was just a reminder that you know nobody's to be overlooked um, that is so true though isn't it what you just said there I know it's a little bit people always say that you shouldn't overlook opponents and you shouldn't kind of but it's, it's a rare situation that it does actually happen. Yeah, so absolutely. For that yeah. to happen then was a bit of a wall. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying that Tyson was, has been, hasn't been preparing properly. He has. Like I say, he does every time. But it's just an extra little reminder. I'm going to ask you, uh, obviously, what I spoke to Tyson about yesterday. As you were watching that fight, and I know you would have been watching that as it was kind of unfolding live. But what was kind of going on in your head as you were seeing that? Well, the last two times I've seen... Joshua Box, I felt like he's been caught in between, not sure whether to be uh, f to fight or to box. And I feel like he's sort of been caught in between the two. Um, 
and I feel like he hasn't worked out the fluidity to transfer between boxing and fighting um, to be a box fighter. So I feel like he sort of gets caught in between the two. You know, obviously he's, he's a potential opponent for Tyson, so I keep a keen eye on him. And, and you know, I noticed like he's trying to throw a jab from the hip, a hip jab. I've never, ever, ever seen him training throwing a hip jab on the pads, um, in the bag. I've seen him do it shadow boxing once or twice, but you know I've never seen him actually practicing it and drilling it. And I feel like he he, he gets caught in between. Um, he's been getting caught in between those two uh, styles. But there's a lot of technical things there that I see that need to be picked up on. And obviously they're going straight back into the rematch where it's okay if you're sitting there saying, ah, oh, do you know what? Maybe we sh we need to box more next time or. We need to be more aggressive next time. That's not specific. You have to be specific. And if they specifically know what was wrong, then it's okay to go back into a rematch. But if you're not specific with it, and it's a little bit, oh, I think maybe we should have just done a bit more of this or a bit more of that, you shouldn't go back into it. You're saying if you can't pinpoint an exact reason to why the defeat happened, then... If you can't be specific, it's not one thing. Yeah. It's not one reason why that happened. Um... There's numerous reasons, but due to technical, not flaws, but errors and not understanding how to box that style. I said when Tom Schwartz was first picked, the reason we're boxing Tom Schwartz is because it's a similar height. And Tyson's style has to adjust when you're boxing somebody shorter. Mm. You have to. So, I mean, everyone's always wise after the event and mm. kind of since that night, everyone's, aside from Joshua, really, anyone but Joshua, has kind of been highlighting things that they perhaps wouldn't have highlighted had he won that fight. Did you notice anything in kind of the, the immediate lead up to that fight from like the ring walk to the, the massage before the fight? Did you notice anything to think that that looked a little bit out of character for how Joshua kind of approaches his kind of... No, I think he was just trying to... Act as if, isn't it? It's act as if. If you act as if you relax, you'll be relaxed. Maybe he was a bit extra tense, thinking this is a big occasion. I need to put on a big show. Maybe he was trying to make himself feel uh, feel more calm but and relaxed. But listen, everybody deals with things their own way. I don't know him personally. I don't know his personality. I don't know his body language, so I can't comment on that. Um, but you can say all these things, but if you're doing the right things in the ring, those things don't happen. It wouldn't have happened. It's like a lottery. Who's coming down? No FIFA today at the moment. Um, everyone's had their opinion again about what should happen now, and you know what kind of happens if he doesn't beat Ruiz in, in the rematch. And it's it really is kind of levelled out compared to the f original fight where no one gave Ruiz a hope in that. Now people are kind of questioning whether Joshua can actually you know, do what he needs to do to, to win this rematch? Well, there's two things he can do. There's one thing he can do if nothing changes, and that's go out there, put the pressure on, be more aggressive and let it be 50-50. Who catches a... if nothing changes? Because he put Ruiz down, so he can hurt Ruiz. He's more than capable of going in there and doing what we expected him to do. He is, but you, when you always have that risk of that coming back at you, especially in the heavyweight division, when you put small gloves on and get clipped up the side of the head like he did. Those things happen, especially in the heavyweight division. Mm. But for me, you know, there's a textbook. When you go to a gym, there's a textbook on how you get taught to box. You step in with your jab and you do this and you do that. And, but those things change as you get to an elite level. You can't box just at, by how a textbook tells you to box. And that's, that, that's why those things are going to happen. And when you come at, at that level, textbook boxing isn't going to win it for you. And boxing a, a small man like Ruiz, who has to be planted to let his shots go, to have the same effect as they would do if he was travelling while punching. Um, and, and if he's planted with his feet, he's got fast hands, good variety, and he can punch. OK? But... So Joshua needs to understand how to create distance, maintain distance, 
um, at, at different distances and understand different distances. And when you're boxing somebody like that, when you step in with your jab, okay, you're closing the distance for that man. Your, a textbook says step in with your jab. But the moment you step in, if you miss that jab, you've closed the distance for the short man to then let his well-varied punches go with speed and with power. And when that jab's not landing, then you reach with a right hand, which naturally, nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten for Joshua, he's going to come back with a left hook. And then after the left hook, he's going to come back with a right uppercut and then come back with a left hook. I saw a few people online kind of questioning his, um, his trainer situation with Rob McCracken, um, which everyone seems to do after a fighter loses a fight. Always. It's, it, it seems to be like, not like a, a common thing, but it does happen often where people start pointing the finger to, the, to their relationship and kind of how they are mm. uh, as a trainer. And, and in this case, Rob McCracken. So as a, as a trainer yourself, uh, how do you kind of see that situation Rob McCracken's a, a top trainer Rob McCracken's uh, I can't have that in a sec thanks mate Rob McCracken's uh, achieved achieved uh, more than me in the sport as a fighter himself and as a trainer so you know I can't sit here and, and slate him I don't know I've not been in the gym with Rob McCracken so I can't say oh he's good at this but he's not good at that or I can't really have an opinion. Um, obviously, I can have an opinion on a technical standpoint to say, oh, I think Joshua should have done this. I don't know if Rob was telling him to do that or it's something that they know. Like I say, if they can be specific with what needs to change and what areas they need to work on, then, okay, go into the rematch. If you can't be specific, and that's the word specific, for me, just to say, we should have pushed him back more or we're boxed on the back foot a little bit more next time, be a bit more careful. That's not specific and that's not good enough to cut it. Don't get me wrong, Joshua's got the capabilities to beat Andy Ruiz. So it is a 50-50, especially when you can punch like he can punch. But, you know, uh, there's obviously uh, technical things that need changing, so to speak. But Rob McCracken, like I say, listen, he's achieved more than me in the sport, so... He's a top trainer. How many Olympic medalists has he produced? Anthony Joshua from Olympic gold medalist to world champion. And not only Anthony Joshua, lots of fighters he's worked with. So yeah. He even trained Tyson for one fight, I think. I think. What happens in the rematch if you to put your house on it? I don't know, because like I said, I don't know. As it stands, if things don't change 50-50... Hmm. Um, for me personally do you know I think the right fight for Joshua probably would have been a Derek Chisora fight something like that what as in next or instead as of Ruiz in next rather than oh, Ruiz right. next rebuild develop your game practice things while in a stern test but there is obviously complications around taking another fight when you don't take if he, if he doesn't take that Opportunity with his but if belts he's back. About then. being in the sport for another nine years. Mm. Why are you in a rush? But I don't know. Listen, maybe they know. Like I say, maybe they know where they went wrong. Maybe they, he had a problem going into the ring. I don't know. And if if that's the case and they've made it, made adjustments, then they'll be confident in um, in the rematch. Moving away from obviously <coughs> Joshua and Ruiz, um, do want to ask you a kind of response for some of the comments that Dylan White has made. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Yeah, God. Dylan White has made towards you recently yeah. on Talk Sport and uh, that 2 Bob channel. Going, What's it called? Email, IFL TV, yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Um, give me the points that... So we had... Ben's not improved Tyson. We had that. But look, what... Um, I didn't pick up a Tyson Fury that was fit, in shape, ready to box. We went from Monaco, where you probably saw him, yeah. to what he'd done in LA. So there's no uh, substance behind that. Um, everybody knows where Tyson's come from, what he's achieved from, what he, what, what he was at. Have I changed his style? No, that would be uh, ignorant, um, stupid, to try and take somebody that's achieved what he's achieved and try and completely change his style. Um, that would be stupid so 
no, I haven't completely changed his style, but if you know what you're looking at, you can see differences in uh, Tyson, um, things that he's added to his game. And, you know, I like to, when, I, when I'm working, I like to have substance behind what I'm doing. I like to know that what I'm doing is working. So if you just look at statistics, now boxing isn't completely based on statistics, but if you look at the statistics from Deontay Wilder fight and the Klitschko fight, you can see the improvements statistically. So I know that what we're doing is working. There's an improvement. Um, Why was Dylan White even making comments about you in the first place? I think because I said stylistically, I don't feel like it's a tough, the toughest fight for Tyson. Now, Dillian White's number five heavyweight in the world, like, he's a good fighter, but, you know, I think he didn't like that, but I don't know. Um, I was, I, I was, for a moment, I was trying to work out your, four, your top four then, but yeah, okay, I got you. Um, well, in the Ring magazine, he's ranked fifth, isn't he, I think? They're the rankings that I'd go off. Um, what, because Tyson stop? <laughs> no, but they are, it is, they are fair, I think, they've got no ties or anything to anybody. Why are you smiling behind the what? camera? Are you suggesting other ranking systems well, have got ties? I don't know, but just, I don't know. But no, anyway. Um, and then he said, uh, what else did he say? He said, uh, a bucket man for tips or something. I've never, worked, I've never held a bucket for, for Jimmy or Mark tips, but um, I spent a lot of time around Jimmy and Mark, obviously with Billy Joe. Did I learn a lot? Yeah, of course I learned a lot. You know, they've been in the game for a long time. Very good trainers. Um, would it have been, is it a bad thing if I held a bucket for somebody? No, of course it's not. Um, I've not got an ego. When it comes to boxing, you need to leave your ego at the door. And um, So, yeah, that's that one. Um, <laughs> Just diplomatic as answers. But it's right though, isn't it? What, I'm going to say I've been around Jimmy Tibbs and not picked a lot up. Are you stupid? You must be stupid if you haven't picked up a lot, spending a lot of time around Jimmy Tibbs. Um, a legend in the game. So, obviously, obviously, you know, as you go on, that's what... It's not the amount of experience. I always say this. It's the quality of it. And I've been lucky enough to spend a lot of time around a lot of good trainers, picked up little bits from each and developed my own style on, and how to do things. Mm. And like I say, when you look at... I like to make sure that what I'm doing is working, not just say, oh, I think he's getting better. Statistically, from those two fights, he's improved. Defensively and offensively. Mm. I know you're one to kind of talk about. One thing I did try to actually uh, get, I don't know if anybody can do it, I tried to get somebody to work out the distance that Tyson covered in the Klitschko fight and then what he covered in the Wilder fight. If anybody can work that out, I would appreciate that. All there right. must be some kind of Opta Joe equivalent like they have in football. Yeah, exactly. That's, oh, that was a uh, statistic that I was looking at trying to get done. I've not had anybody be able to do that yet, but if anybody can do that, I would uh, 23.4 kilometres in the Klitschko fight. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> I, know. I wouldn't know that. Some coverage. Do you know what? It's quite an interesting stat, actually. The, it is, yeah. The, the because kind I, of know, you cover. I know, um, and it was something that I knew in the fight, that obviously Tyson lost a lot of weight, and I knew he was feeling it, and I actually said to him in the corner, like, now you're starting to hold your feet and wait for him to react, for your feet to react. Um, and he wasn't covering as much ground, so it's an interesting fact that I'd like to see just how much. Obviously, stylistically, it was a little bit different as well. Um... So one of them steps it. apps like so, some, do. I'm, I'm sure somebody can do it someone can do it so if anybody can I'd much appreciate it okay um, yeah I know you're one of these kind of trainers that likes to focus on what's ahead of you ahead of getting carried away with what potentially could be next but mm. uh, talking to Tyson yesterday he said uh, there'll be a, a potentially another two more fights after Schwartz and then I mean we're looking at these another two potential fights with Wilder next year but I'm assuming you're not even looking nowhere near that far yet no I'm watching Tom Schwartz in a minute I'm not watching Deontay Wilder in a minute even though he only done, spent about two minutes in the ring since that fight um, I'm looking at Tom Schwartz and nobody else at the minute because that's how mistakes happen um, so I wouldn't like I like to go into the fight knowing I've done my part 
And like I said before, I feel like when going into a fight, I like to be in a position to feel like I know what they're going to do before they know what they're going to do. Do you know what I'm going to do now before I'm going to do it? No, because I've, I've not sat and studied you and what question you're going to ask. And we're talking about boxing. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I know your food's sitting there and uh, trainers got to eat too. So appreciate your time, Ben. I'm sure I'll catch up with you again at some point this week here in Las Vegas. Got any closing words? Do you, do you want to shout anyone out? Or was that all done last night? <laughs> we done plenty of shouting out last night. 15 minutes. Out. You'd be gutted if you were, if you were missed out. Yeah, right, yeah. I've had some texts this morning. What did Tyson say about me? So, so people are getting the shout outs. Done well with that video, isn't it? Mm. It was a good interview, really. Yeah, it was. It was good. He's in a good place. He's in a good place. Just when there's that, when he's... Um, Backs against the wall a little bit, and he's in a in a in a big test. Um, obviously, he thrives off of that. And to be honest, I think. Obviously, I said before I didn't want Tyson to take that wilder fight at that point. But actually, looking back, the preparation for that fight and going into that fight and the the tunnel vision that he had to have going into that fight I genuinely do believe helped him massively when it comes to his mental health situation you know it was a big turn and going into the Sefa fight you know there was there was still um, you know problems and going into the Pianetta fight it was a lot better but going into the Wilder fight was like there was a big big change there mm. so overall um, you know it, inside the ring outside the ring but also at home and that has been a massive um A massive difference and a massive improvement and a big thing because people one thing I would like to say is people always say oh Ben's done a great job and with Tyson and blah 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 but it's not just me that's done it he's got a full team um, obviously I've done my part and my part's a little bit in, in people are interested in, in in terms of boxing and that because that's what Tyson's known for but his family played a massive part brothers his dad Paris, the kids, um, his friends, always supportive. He's got lots of friends here with him now, supporting him. Um, strength and conditioner, nutritionist, Tim, big Tim, 24-7. If anything he's doing, Tim will do it, um, you know, because he wants the best for Tyson. He's got good, uh, good team around him and everybody's played their part. So I'm very happy with uh, in that those terms of things is that the right what way to that'll do I mean, people know what you're talking about yeah people know what I mean fuck it yeah Ben Davison thank you very much for talking to IFL TV and uh, yeah respect best. William Hill sponsors IFL TV I'm the man to beat Daniel Dubois. We're going to sleep.